Hello and welcome to my weekly video blog and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about does your appetite change in the perimenopause and the menopause. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. So do you feel that you are hungry all the time, no matter how much you eat, you still want to eat more? Do you find you're getting really hungry in between meals, maybe even before you go to bed? Do you find that the foods that you once loved, you can't stand now, they just don't taste the same? You just don't feel hungry and, and you literally don't want to eat at all? So what I'm going to do is talk about why these changes occur and what you can do to help yourself. So if you feel that you are hungry all the time, there can be a number of causes for this. As your estrogen decreases, we have a, a, a hunger hormone called ghrelin, and ghrelin is produced when our blood sugars get low, but also estrogen can affect the production of ghrelin. If it increases, it makes us feel hungry all the time. And this is not about self-control. It's not about feeling that you, you know, you're, you're losing control. This is very much one of the body's survival modes that it's going into. And it's very difficult to, to fight this sometimes. You might find that you're wanting to eat specific food groups at certain times of the day. With all the hormonal changes, you, your nutritional needs go sky high. Your body needs more of practically every single vitamin and mineral. And sometimes your body is really seriously hungry because it needs some of these specific vitamins and minerals. So if you do find that it's certain food groups that you are tending to eat more of, that could be an indication that you're slightly low in these vitamins or minerals and maybe even look at a, adding in a food supplement to help. It can be stress eating. That's me. If I get stressed, I eat just whatever I, I can get hold of. And obviously during the menopause, so many women are stressed and anxious along with everything else that's going on in the world today. So stress is, is, is an extra um, addition that can really put a lot of pressure on our diet. It can be poor sleep. They know, studies have shown, that if you don't sleep well, you will feel hungrier and eat more the following day. Being um, Having poor sleep can also cause fatigue. And what do we do when we're tired? We just want sweet things to give us a bit of a boost or we want an extra cup of coffee just to, just to lift us up. So what can help in this situation? It is really important to keep your blood sugars stable because the more stable they are, the less cravings and the less hungry you are going to feel. So breakfast is really important here. If you think about it, if you were going on a long car journey, the first thing you would do with your car is you would check the oil, you would check the water and you would check the fuel. Our bodies are going on a long, long journey every day through the perimenopause and the menopause. So we need to make sure that everything's topped up before we start our day. If you're not very keen on breakfast, you can look at some kind of protein drink that can give you a bit of everything you need and will help to stave off the hunger and the cravings later on in the day. So make sure that you also get plenty of protein with each meal, get your fats, they're really important. Go low carb. I don't recommend a lot of carbs in the menopause because they can cause weight gain, but things like your round grain brown rice, your quinoa, some of the really good grains, wholemeal, a um, little bit of wholemeal bread can be really helpful at keeping your energy levels going manage your stress, have that 30 minutes me time a day. It's worth its weight in gold and can really make a lot of difference to your, your blood sugar levels too. If sleep's an issue, again, look at our licensed product, Dormiazan, which you take about 30 minutes before going to bed. Loss of appetite and not being keen on eating. It's not so common during the perimenopause and the menopause 
but it does happen to some women. So it's important again to resolve this. Things that can affect your appetite, it can be nausea. So many women end up with nausea in the menopause. And again, it's a bit like morning sickness in, in pregnancy. It can really affect your eating patterns. And if you're also being physically sick, that can cause issues as well. You can end up be becoming um, really seriously nutritionally um, de deficient here. It can be stress and anxiety for some women. It, you can go off food instead of having the, the emotional eating. A dry mouth, again, for some women can cause problems. If your mouth is really dry, you're not producing saliva and eating can just be very, very uncomfortable. Your sense of taste and smell can change. And again, if you're not tasting food, if you're not smelling food, sometimes you know you, you just don't want to eat because there's no pleasure involved in the whole process. It can also be digestive problems. Some women find they get a lot of gastric reflux or, or indigestion or bloating or, or constipation. And again, that, that if you're feeling really uncomfortable after you've eaten, then sometimes some women find that they just want to eat. Things to do in this situation is eat little and often, but try and sit and relax whilst you're eating and chew really slowly because that can help, especially if your mouth is a little bit dry. If you chew slowly, that can help to um, increase the production of saliva. You could look, if it's a, a dry mouth, you could look at sea buckthorn. We have a remedy called Centaurium um, that, that we recommend for things like gastric reflux. Again, if you're not eating a lot, go for the protein powders. Your nutritional needs go sky high, as I've mentioned before. And if you're not eating, um, you're not getting enough nu nutritional goodness, that can make all of your symptoms a lot worse. Your body basically just can't cope with, without anything to keep it well fueled. If you're getting the nausea, look at ginger, either things like um, a low sugar ginger biscuit or some candied um, ginger or even a cup of ginger tea. That can be really soothing at, at helping to ease the nausea. For easing digestion issues, if you're getting the bloating, go with yarrow complex. If you find that smell is an issue, sometimes that can be due to low zinc. So maybe try a zinc supplement, 15 milligrams once a day to see if that can help. When do you go and see the doctor about either of these two? <clears throat> if you're finding that you've tried all these things, your appetite is still going way out of control, it could indicate things like diabetes. If you're not eating, if you're really losing weight quickly and nothing you can do to stop it, it could be to do with an overactive thyroid. Um, so again, if these issues don't resolve with the things that I've mentioned, then it's certainly important just to double check with your doctor to make sure that other health issues aren't underneath the whole thing. So I hope you found this one helpful. If any of you had any issues with these two situations, if there's anything that you found worked really well for you, please do share them and I'll speak to you next week with another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.